Welcome to Photo Work. I'm Mylon. We have Shannon here. Hello, hello. On today's episode, we have food and celebrity photographer Josh Teas. And Josh shares with us how truth has shaped his work, how he also shoots food photography, and what it's really like shooting celebrities. Oh, including a cool story with David Lynch. David Lynch! Sit back and enjoy. Well, welcome to the show, Josh. Mm, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> good to meet you. Yeah, absolutely, likewise. Yeah. Um, where are we starting? Right off. Oh, you want to do crazy journey? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, can we actually start really quick? Yeah. Um, yeah. We lost a good one yesterday, guys. Oh yeah, can we? Mm-hmm. Talk I just want to give that? like a, get, a a good little respect to Peter. Let's uh, talk Peter about Lindbergh, that. man, what a cool guy. He kind of shaped a lot of people's cool. careers and lives, and awesome guy. Um, I definitely like he he said a quote a while ago that like stuck true to me and I think like I try to live by it as much as I can especially in my work but he said and I'm not going to quote it verbatim but it's something about it's something around um it's not that I'm interested in or it's not that I care about the truth it's the only thing I'm interested in and I thought that was so heavy and beautiful and you could see it in his work and like if you can strive for that like that's what I'm striving for so I just want to shout out Peter Lindbergh yeah, you know. big shout out to Peter Lindbergh. He's so impactful, you know. Mm-hmm. Champion, beautiful, yeah. amazing human, mm-hmm. awesome stuff. So, yeah. so based on that quote, how are you able to impart that in your work? You know, it starts with being honest with yourself and true to yourself and what you want and what you're passionate about. Being true with how you handle yourself with clients. Um, I think that people can get caught up myself especially um can get caught up in like the game of it all a little bit yeah especially the industry with celebrities and things like that but i read that quote and i thought about that a lot and you know obviously other life happens that ins- that influence these decisions but i just I, i'm not reserved with it anymore i don't try to dress up for anybody or wear a different mask when i'm in front of anybody it's just you know if, if you like me it's because it's who i am and if we connect, it's because we have that good natural chemistry. If not, then we're going to get something different, and it's going to be great anyway. So just striving for that truth. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> Mic <Mike> drop. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's good to no, <laughs> see you. We just found our trailer for this podcast. Uh, I know. Podcast. It's our, like, our little teaser trailer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so based on all that, like it seems like, where did you find Peter Lindbergh in your your photography journey? I'm obsessed with photography. Mm-hmm. It's obviously this isn't literally true, but it's really the only thing I care about. I, I think about it all the time. I'm constantly looking. I'll, I'll be walking down the street, but even without my camera, and I look and I go, "Oh, that would be a really good photo." Dang, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. So I'm constantly looking at new photographer's work or you know the legends and drawing inspiration from them and just seeing like I don't know everybody has this unique thing so I'm obsessed with art and photography really photography um and photographers so mm-hmm. he's just on the list of people that you know inspire yeah oh yeah, yeah. absolutely um do we want to dig in you want to go? Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it. Do you want to do the journey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's part of the journey, too. It is. It yeah. Is. But, like, what, it, what, like, where did you come from? Where did you go? Yeah, yeah. Hot <laughs> Night Joe? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, that part of the journey is something that you find along the way, and it's, like, not something, I mean, there's so much before it that mm-hmm. has to happen before you even realize it. You're passionate about things so uh i grew up playing a lot of sports and things like that i suffered a really bad neck injury that kind of took me out of that and it like forced me to give up that part of what i thought my, when my was my journey and kind of find a new passion a new hobby so i knew that photography was like a hobby i took it in high school i did all these things yeah. i actually failed um oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I failed photography in high school. Not that it's like a defining thing, because yeah, um, but <laughs> you it didn't was, show up. Did but you? It, no, I showed up every single day. Oh, just, okay. <laughs> um, late, of course. Yep. You know? <laughs> okay. um, but so I went to uh, I went to school for journalism. 
uh, hated it, came back. Uh, that was at University of Hawaii, which was so cool. Mm -hmm. um, came back and was, of course, dating this girl. And she said, hey, I remember that you like photography. I'm taking this class at this local community college. If you want to come and, like, just mess around, like, you should join. I said, okay. So I took the class, ended up realizing, oh, wow, like, I actually – I actually really love this. This is this is a lot of fun. And but I I only saw it through the eyes of like a wedding photographer or something because I had no idea that it could be like a business. And then uh, I was taking simultaneously taking this drawing class because I'm a ter oh, I am so bad at drawing. So I wanted <laughs> yeah, to get like a, the learn, fundamentals yeah. and learn and all these things. And it just so happened that I had missed a couple classes and I wasn't gonna pass or anything like that potentially, and this photographer, this incredible, um, generous photographer named Joseph Giannis, he's a music rock and roll photographer, he does some ad stuff, he does, but really his bread and butter is musicians for Rolling Stone, Billboard, all that kind of stuff. Um, he was doing a lecture for this class, um, but during my drawing class. So I was like, oh, I want to go to this. So I talked to my professor and said, hey, I'm going to potentially miss this class. She said, if you miss this class, you fail. I said, Okay, well, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> it's drawing. Yeah. Um, so I go to this lecture, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. I didn't realize, like, you don't realize there's a point when you realize that photography is everywhere. And that it's intentional when you see a magazine cover, or you see a spread inside, or an album cover, that it's intentional art. And uh, that was my moment at that point. Joseph, at the end of the lecture... Uh, he show, after showing us his huge portfolio, uh, said, if anyone needs a, or wants to, or is interested in interning, send me an email. Maybe we'll work something out. So I was the only one to send him an email. I uh, showed up to his, uh, what I thought was his studio, in a three-piece suit. Like, I didn't know anything about this <laughs> industry, guys. I thought, like, you just had to dress up and, like, do all these things. And I was like, I don't know. Um, showed up to his studio in a three-piece suit. It was actually his apartment in Glendale. Um, and he answered the door in pajamas. And I'm in a suit. And I'm thinking, what the, f what the heck did I just get into? You know what I mean? Um, what, what is this? And so that was like the first part. We, I ended up getting this internship. I assisted and worked with him for a couple years. Um, learned what a, a photography business could be, um, but wasn't, I thought that was the end all be all. Like he was, he had made it. And at that point I didn't realize that he was still working, you know, he was still working on it, you know? And so I took a break from him, uh, started creating my own work, moved to Boston for a little while, um, realized that it was getting stagnant and kind of boring, moved back to Los Angeles and took an internship with Art Striber. Uh, he, if anybody doesn't know his work, I'm sure that you do if you're a photographer listening to this, but if you don't, look him up. He's awesome. He does tons of ad photography and all that stuff, but he's the most generous man ever with knowledge and, and uh, instruction. He keeps you completely in tune with his sets and his office, and you get to see all that stuff. So it was like, oh, this is also what a photo business could be um and it was beautiful and it kind of like took that took it to the next level so i did an internship with him assisted for him a little bit and then yeah that's kind of the journey now i'm here working um it's been a it's, like, it's been five five years six years since that internship and it's just I've been hustling ever since and yeah living that freelance life Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to like talk about how you do both celebrity portrait and food photography and how you're able to like do both of those because they seem like different in my head. They seem like different mindsets a little bit from the outside. But can you talk about how you're able to do both? Yeah, celebrity. They are completely different. There are crossovers when you talk about chefs that are celebrity chefs think people like Wolfgang Pucks and mm -hmm. you know anything on the Food Network and stuff it kind of crosses over there but that's pretty much the only time I've seen a crossover uh, yeah. it all comes from the same place so they are completely different 
photo styles, um, but they come from the same place. Food is the most human thing that's not human. You know, people make it, people eat it, you share it, you're around the table, you're eating with other people. And um, every holiday is based around food. Like everything that you, people gather around for is, is food. So it's very human. And if you treat it that way, uh, you kind of get a similar feel as like the celeb stuff. It's really about investing in, in the chef. I, I'm not so much focused on, I don't know anything about food, um, to be honest. I, we started this um, food magazine a few years ago and people started liking it, but really what it was was storytelling about the people behind the food. Um, oh, that's cool. So that the, the, it kind of led to just like, well, we have to shoot their dishes and we have to shoot them holding their dishes and like all these things. So it was really just like portraiture of chefs and sous chefs and staff and all these weird little intimate stories around LA that turned into, oh, well, why don't we just have you step out and we'll take a photo of this dish. After, you know, years of that, you find different eyes or, or angles for dishes and things like that. So shooting both is awesome because the food stuff pays for the lack of money in the celebrity world. I mean, there's so many food companies, so many food brands, restaurants, all this stuff. And, um, you know, if you, ha if you try to have a unique vision on it, like people won't take notice. But when it comes to the celebrity stuff, it's like they're so there's a niche for uniqueness. A lot of people like just it's all about the press. People will have a photo of this person on white and be totally excited and fine. It'll go in a magazine. It'll be yep. no problem. <laughs> so you can find anybody to do that. So why would we pay somebody to do why would we pay somebody exorbitant amount of money? You know, there's a there's a niche for it, but the food stuff funds everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's tough though, because I'm in trying to find like other teams and people to work with you. Like, yeah. uh, like for example, a rep, I'm reps are not too keen on photo or on, on repping too complete. It's all about being specialized. You know, you want to be a portrait photographer. There's a rep for being por right. a portrait photographer. Um, you want to be a food photographer, there's a rep for that. They don't really cross over that much. Um, so a rep that would may have the editorial connections for celebrity, like the GQs and the Entertainment Weeklies and things like yeah. that, may not have the same connections to Bon Appetit. Or <laughs> so it, it's interesting to find that little. I'm still looking for it. So yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's you know it's been like a it's been a little journey, but uh, I'm still looking for it. But they, uh, yeah, it's not a common thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think people do it obviously, but it's not as common. Do you have a specific team that you work with when you're doing food photography? Or is it just you? Do you have a food stylist on staff, a couple food stylists? Yeah, uh, team, I have, I have my go-to guys that I love to work with. Um, if anybody emails me, I'll recommend them a hundred times. Uh, I invite you guys to. <laughs> um, anybody needs assistance, let me know. Uh, but I try to keep it as natural. Just bumping back to the whole truth. Um, I don't like product food photography. I've, I've never done it. Like I've done variations of it, but I've never done like the McDonald's toothpick in every layer, mashed potatoes for ice cream type of shoot. Mm -hmm. I won't. I mean, I, I might, <laughs> depending on, you know, <laughs> that, that little budget thing. Um, but the reality is that it's not real. And food is real and people are real. So I need, I need the realness. So I don't have a food stylist usually. I've worked with one only a couple of times, but because we've been doing it for so long, we just kind of have that eye for it. Like when it comes to props and stuff, like we know how to fold the napkins. We know how to place the items and things. So yeah. specific team, no, but I do have a, a group of assistants that I, I mean, they have my back and they, they help out more than anything. So, um, yeah, food status and stuff I value and I like, and I think that they could really step up the game, but m the projects I'm working on are more so a little bit l more low maintenance or they see something in the photo and they want a little bit of that grit. Um, right. We just did this shoot for this coffee shop and they were like, we don't even want it like retouched. I was like, trust me, you do. But I, I understand what you're saying. Like yeah. you want it to be as real as possible. So when you bring in a food stylist, it's like everything also slow, slows down, mm -hmm. can slow down the, the flow of a day. 
Always. as well because everything has to be seared perfectly and like little things it's their job they have to be perfect at it and i get it and i love it and for certain projects so necessary but the majority of projects i'm on they're they're living in the world that things are going to be a little runny things are going to be here because it's it's real and i think that's necessary i don't think we see that in advertising enough oh, everything's wow. so everything's so fake um not everything there's some people that are that do it well but a lot of things are, are pretty fake. It's what I'm excited about social media advertising a little bit. Um, not influencers, but some of these brands like do like very organic, real, like just like shout out sponsored posts that I like. I like that you're getting into somebody's world and it's like, this is how it's actually used. I don't know, that's just a little tangent. I mean, it's nice to see natural I feel like it's more appealing, especially if you're going to like a local place. It you don't really want the photos to look like a McDonald's shoot. Could you imagine it? I every single time you ever eat a McDonald's or a any fast food or anything like a chain wrap, anything like that, like you look at the menu and then your food comes out, mm -hmm. they do themselves a disservice <laughs> right off the bat. Right off the bat. Um, because you know it's going to look a hundred times worse, and the customer satisfaction at that point is going to be super low. It's just going to plummet. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been like, wow, this looks anything like the photo. So you, you wouldn't do that, at, like exactly like you said, a local spot. Like mm -hmm. you see it on the menu or you see it on the website and you go there and it looks like it because mm -hmm. that's yeah. what it is. Because we just, it was me and the chef there and he's literally making it how he would present it. And I say, okay, when you set it down on the table, like how would this face, if I was sitting here at this spot, set it down, serve it to me. And he sets it down and then I shoot it from that angle because I want, and a ton of different angles, but like we start there because we want it to be real. When you sit down, this is what you're going to see. Is it prudent to ask how you were able to transition from doing wedding into? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. I would love is to this... hear that. I started doing weddings, which is like, I don't knock it ever. I think that there's some people that are really phenomenal at it and it, they, they make a lot of money from it. And some of these people are like really phenomenal artists. And I think that that would transition really well into like, and it does transition really well into like beauty or lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily like fashion beauty, but definitely that lifestyle lookbook feel because they just are killers at master or mastering um, natural light. I didn't have a passion for it. I, I don't like attending weddings. I don't like going to weddings. Uh, just kind of like an introvert <laughs> a little bit um i'm with you I, I they need a i'm sure that there is a word for it but they need a word for like a really really personable introvert somebody who when you're in a group setting like gets it and wants to hang out with people and like loves people but like also wants to leave three hours in <laughs> yeah two hours in <laughs> um so i don't like weddings i don't like going to them um so i just decided like that wasn't fair to the clients that I was shooting for. You want somebody that's invested in your shoot. So at that point I was like, I think I gotta stop this. Um, I do it as favors for friends, mm -hmm. things like that. If you're my best buddy, like I'll see your wedding, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, the transition came with, with uh, Joseph Giannis, the photographer that I interned for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He made me realize that you didn't have to do that. I thought that was just the only way to make money. Um, as a photographer, I didn't know anything. And he was just like, no, like, there's so much more. There's so much more. So Joseph Giannis uh, taught me a little bit about the editorial world and a little bit a little bit about the advertising world. And then my eyes were open and it was like, oh, okay, we can be doing this. What type of personality or brain does it take to do celebrity? There's a, a ton of people that do it, and everybody has their own personality. For me, that's the only person I can speak about. I, I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't love people. Um, I love honesty. I love people. Uh, you have to care about them and, tell, and care about telling their story. Uh, sometimes it's not quite telling stories as much as press, but even in the in-between moments. Like, I live for, like, the off-camera moments when we just get to know these people like we're staring into each other's eyes like we're i'll never forget it obviously they meet a ton of people but like i never forget those moments so you got to love people um 
And uh, I mean, you just got to be up for whatever it's whatever they're going to offer. I think as photographers, directors, people like that, we use some of these celebrities as canvases for our own ideas, and that's not fair um, because they're people. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to let them do their art on 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 camera and like kind of assume this role um, for the shoot, but really like so often we get, we show up and we're the photographers so we have this artist vision and these things and we say hey this is the vision we want you to do this and then they sit up and they do it and it's like almost like this like now it's not a collaboration at that point and yeah. so it takes a personality or, or uh, a willingness to accept that your idea your idea can be your idea but like they may not like it they may not like it and they may give you something completely different than what you intended or wanted, um, especially with celebrities because they have that power, you know, when it's a model, like they're getting paid to be there and, um, for the most part, you know, <laughs> uh, for the most part, they're getting paid to be there and they have this job or, and if they're not getting paid to be there, they're passionate, they're showing up for free for some reason for celebrities, like they don't have to be there. You know, they can, you know, for press, it helps them. But most of the time, they don't have to be there. So um, you're going to get tons of varying personalities. And you just got to be willing to accept all of them because people are going to be unique. Just like they're going to ex- have to accept the fact that there's going to be tons of different personalities of photographers that they work with. Um, and not everybody meshes, and some people do. So just patience and really caring. If you care about people, you have no problem because they show up and you realize that they're another human. Yeah. What advice can you give somebody that wanted to break into celebrity photography? Um, you gotta be low maintenance. Spec shoots. Um, spec shoots are like test shoots. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what they are, um, kind of look into them. They, uh, it's a test shoot with the speculation that you'll be able to sell this later or use it later. Um, really what it is, is just, you're doing free photos for celebrities, which is so aggravating, but if you want to break into it, you have to prove yourself like in every other form of photography. So you want people to trust that you can shoot celebrities. Sometimes you got to do it for like a little bit. If I had a book, I'd, it would, the title would be called work for free until you don't have to, Mm -hmm. because it's, it's so necessary. I've gotten, I did spec shoots for, um, publicists and and uh pr agencies and things like that for free for like a year and i ended up investing um thousands of dollars into these shoots because i care about my assistants and things like that so much and gear and the quality of it so i'm gonna invest uh so i ended ended up investing like thousands of dollars over like a year or two years of spec shoots and then somebody hits me up and says hey we want you to shoot gavin rossell for this thing we'll pay you this whatever and it covers all of that investment beforehand so even though it looks like you're doing you're working for free you're really just investing in in what hopefully will be a a potential payout later Mm -hmm. so i i advise spec shoots um i also advise looking at like your hero's work all the time um only don't compare yourself but kind of compare things um at least quality um, you don't need their artistic vision, but you definitely need the, the same quality. You have to be very, very honest with your portfolio right away. Uh, if your favorite photographer is Annie Leibovitz and you want to shoot for Vogue, you need to look at your portfolio and you need to look at her portfolio, who they are hiring, and see if it matches in quality, um, technical quality. Artistic vision can vary but technical quality has to be there because they will hire her if your stuff isn't um, on the same quality level. To be very, very honest the entire time, um, ask too many questions. Ask too many questions um, and communicate too much because that's the thing that can be the demise of a shoe is, is when there's things aren't said and then there's like weird little tension and air here and there, like just ask a ton of questions, be super honest with yourself. And unfortunately 
work a little bit for free. Make sure you're getting something out of it, like uh, like portfolio work, because at the end of the day, we're artists. So you want to be, a, I mean, I would do this stuff for free. I, I shoot people for free all the time. You know, it just so happens that, you know, it's a, sometimes a celebrity, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about the realities of how you get paid as a celebrity portrait photographer? Because it's a little bit different than like an advertising <laughs> photographer. You know what the realities of it? Yeah, um, yeah of course, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Shoot for free. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, the reality is that there is a niche group of people that make good money in, in portrait photography. I mean, there's a lot of photographers out there, um, but in, in celebrity portrait photography, it's it's. I find more and more that I want to do it less and less. Not that I. I don't love connecting with these people, but like, let me backtrack. That's not exactly true. I just want to do it specifically in a way, um, in a, in a different way, but the whole press thing and everything, you don't make a lot of money. You, you can do it through syndication. One way to make a lot of money through celebrity photographer is syndication and they have a ton of Getty photographers. Um, I'm with August syndication. They have trunk, they have, People that resell your photos. You do a cele- I do a spec sheet with this person. We did it for free, but now it's on this archive of imagery that if somebody needs a photo of Remy Malik, there's a photo that I've taken on there, and if they like it, then they then they resell it. But that that one wasn't for free. But if it was for free, you know, right. that happens. So um, syndication is a great way to make money in celebrity photography editorial is not a good way to make money in celebrity photography except for in the back end you hopefully can syndicate um (laughs) key art um but that's also moving into the advertising celebrity world if you're talking about just regular celebrity portraits it's 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 not very lucrative when it comes to money but it kind of allows you to work with a ton of different people and the reality is that it'll get you other work because people see that you photographed a George Clooney or Nicole Kidman, and they think that you can photograph anything else. Right. Yeah, like, oh, he's worked with him. Of course, he can. It's like, is that the reality? Probably not. But um, it it looks good. So that that can make you more money somewhere else. But it's not very lucrative. That's just honest. Mm-hmm. But it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, aside from the money, there's the value in the passion of doing it and meeting these people. That's, I care more about the passion and the journey and the experience. And sometimes you get to go crazy places to work with these people that, and experience like certain, I don't know, even if it's like a celebrity chef or something, you're experiencing a completely different experience that nobody else is going to be able to have in that moment. Um, and that is so special. I would take experiences over money any day. Um, you could find other places to work, you know, experiences are, are key, but yeah, it's, it's definitely the passion is, is, is so much more important. You got to find your voice with it though, because I was kind of getting like a little bit like annoyed or not, not burned out, but like fed up with the fact that I felt sometimes like we were just doing like this press thing. Like we'd spend so much money on this and we yeah. put up this huge, beautiful thing. And then the, the celebrity or the subject would walk in for like one minute. Okay, thanks. And then he'd leave. And you're like, wow, like we just did all that for to have no moment, to have no interaction. Like what the heck? So more so than ever, like now I'm trying to focus into connecting with these people and with anybody, but really connecting with them and trying to tell a story with them rather than just like them using me for press and me using them for portfolio. Like that's not, I don't know. There's gotta be art in it somewhere. People look at these people like they're like they're gods, you know what I mean? So if you shoot uh, a person like George Clooney, everybody thinks that you can shoot pancakes or everybody thinks that you can shoot um, anything, really. I get co- contacted for the most random inquiries and I'm like, what in the world would make you believe that I would be the right person for this job? But it's like, oh, we saw your portfolio and we saw that you shot all these celebrities. It's like, all right. <laughs> As it builds, it's a confidence builder too for other people. They give this esteem. It also shows that you know how to work with a range of, of, of people. Can you tell us a difficult moment you had and how you overcame it? Yeah, I think uh, there's t- there's gonna be a million difficult moments, um, and it just depends on like your perception of it, um, because there's sometimes where 
a difficult moment is actually just like a blessing in disguise or maybe it's some job canceled but it opened the door of, of availability for something else so like it just i found so often that something that i thought was difficult at the time like it's like oh that was actually i'm actually pretty thankful for that a difficult moment specifically for me was just lack of communication and that's been like a ringing through if like you don't have good communication but i uh i was really eager and really excited to try to get a rep so i thought like that's the thing i need it so i took this meeting with this agency um called dlm um and i'll say them specifically because i i hope to let everybody avoid ever working with them um <laughs> because they're dishonest and I don't like dishonesty. Um, I just would like to save photographers the trouble because I know two other photographers that were with them that went through the same exact things as I did. So DLM is an agency, um, a photo represent photo representative agency um, in Australia. And I don't know if they still have one in LA, um, but they're also, they were in LA and we did this job. It's another blessing in disguise thing, but it was like one of my first ad jobs. And it was for California Grown, the the farming, mm -hmm. you know, agriculture. Uh, we were shooting just a bunch of fruits and vegetables and things like that. Um, it was this big ad job, and I loved it. I was so excited, but I didn't know anything about this industry, and uh, I didn't know anything about rates and usage rates and things like that. So when they told me that you had for two weeks, the rate was going to be. Um, I don't know how specific I should get, but like the rate was going to be 13 grand for two weeks uh, for an advertising job. And then I find out later through all this like shady stuff and the story could go on for a long, long that they build it for 60. Um, so it appeared that I was billing the client for 60 grand and they were pocketing that, the the extra. Um, so that, that was a, a really weird experience because it was something that like we signed these contracts and like I kind of didn't have any power in that situation anymore. And um, additionally, like they were very uh, specific in this situation specifically, they, they told the client in a, in a separate private email that I don't, that I personally don't talk to the client or the ad agency, the eight, the rep, the rep, talks to them and then he talks to me because that was my request. I don't talk to the client. I was like, what? <laughs> dude, what the hell? Like, what are you talking about? I didn't say that. And so I find out later, it, we end up doing the first half of this project. And then I go to New York to meet with this client um, to discuss the second half of the project. And I go, guys, can we clear the air? Cause that first week was weird. Like that was weird. Like I felt like I wasn't in any meetings. Um, you guys were kind of avoiding me, like talking like, I feel like this could be so much more successful. Can we just talk about this? And they're like, they took this deep breath. They're like, and Andrew told us that you, <laughs> you don't talk to the client, like all these things. And so like, we ended up finding out a lot of like dishonesty going on there and, and, and weird, um, interesting things. Um, but all that being said, it was, a, it was, it was a really terrible experience from the business side. Um, it was the most fulfilling, one of the most fulfilling shoots I've done because I got to work with a ton of farmers throughout California for two weeks. I did this beautiful, like I said, I choose experience over money anytime. I got to travel around California photographing farmers and like dedicated workers, which is my passion, anybody that works really hard um, for two weeks. And I ended up making some money from it. Like that's, so it was like a tough situation, but if there's any like, if I can give anybody some advice, it's like, just keep going because it's, a, it's probably going to be a blessing just in disguise, you know? Yeah. Um, would you, well, I guess it's not really, hmm. it's, uh, it seems like celebrity photography is a bunch of difficult moments that turn out usually pretty good. Is it? They usually don't. I mean, time, time, right? You yeah. get, 10 minutes max if you're lucky. <laughs> you wish, you man. Wish. Right? <laughs> you wish you got 10 minutes. Uh, no, I I wouldn't necessarily say that it's like a it's a bunch of difficult moments. Um, I would say that it's a bunch of uh, time sensitive moments. Like you said, time is a huge thing. Um, but those can be remedied, you know? Just make sure you're prepared. Uh, yes. Those, it can be difficult to connect with somebody in, in a short amount of time, but like 
practice your craft. Go work out. I did this thing in very early on where I just um, interviewed somebody for 30 seconds and then took their portrait and tried to capture their essence in that. And, you know, like, obviously it was a, it was a dumb little project before, but it, it helps. It helps when they walk in the door, like, every light is set. Everything is ready. Um, if you're also realizing when you can't have a lot of lights and can't have a lot of gear. You know, they were only going to have 30 seconds. The first celebrity shoot I ever did that wasn't a musician um, was Ryan Seacrest. And I showed up. I was doing BTS for, for iHeartRadio. And it's going to come out in like 10 years. Someone's going to listen to this and go, what's iHeartRadio? You know? right. <laughs> I always think about that when you like specific brands. On um, CD? Yeah, yeah. People are like, what the heck? Um <laughs> So, no, no, he was doing this intro thing for this iHeartRadio music festival. So I was doing BTS for that. And I said, hey, I would love to do this. But um, the catch is that I need to take a portrait of, of, of Ryan at some point of the day. So I show up four or five hours early and I set up this huge setup in this back room. Um, actually, Corey helped me out because <laughs> he's so kind. And again, another super generous person that I've been able to, you know, ask questions and things like that with, but he helped me out. He, he helped me set up this whole entire thing. Um, and we waited for an additional like four hours mm. for, we did the BTS things, but then it was like a lot of sit, sit around and wait. Ryan Seacrest was literally walking out of the bathroom and his publicist said, Hey, stop here on our white seamless. And he looked and went, uh, okay. I don't even remember if we introduced ourselves to each other, but we took seven frames and he goes, you good? And I was like, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. Sure. Like that's, I, I mean, I'm not going to, and then he goes, great. And he just leaves. And it wasn't like rude. It wasn't anything. You could just tell like the guy's busy. The guy's busy. He's like, there's a reason why we know who he is. So mm -hmm. just be prepared for it, you know, um, or real, realize that maybe you're only going to get five, six, photos out of it and as long as you get one mm -hmm. you know then it means something to you you know if it's yeah it's the difference between art and commercial art um i say this often art only has to mean something to yourself you know what i mean and commercial art has to mean something to others um and when it comes to just your own art like as long as you're shooting for that you know if that's your inspiration your passion you only get one photo um, it's, it's all a process. Obviously commercial art's a little bit different. If you're doing something, you gotta have, you know, you gotta check off all the boxes and make sure that yep. the clients get everything they need. But for the most part in a situation like that, where I was doing the BTS stuff over here and, um, we were just doing a portrait, six photos was enough because we were ready. We were set. We don't need to kill this for any longer than it needs to be. I read an uh, interview that you did talking about shooting David Lynch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I need to know more. I love, <laughs> I, I love, I love David Lynch. Yeah. Um, it was the coolest experience I've ever had. So I was contacted. I work a lot for a magazine called deadline. Um, shout out Craig Edwards over there because he took a chance on me when he didn't have to. And we've been creating some really cool content ever since. It's like, huge on why I'm shooting so much celebrity stuff. Um, so super shout out to him. Uh, he contacts me last minute. I don't even remember where I was. I was out of town for sure though. And he says, Hey, we have to shoot. We get five minutes with David Lynch at his house. And I was like, uh, okay, where or when he said it's tomorrow. So I literally jumped on like a flight home and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm there. We showed up, we had for, we were shooting in his kitchen, um, which it was a little intimidating for me because another one of my favorite photographers is Austin Hargrave. And uh, he has photographed David Lynch beautifully, beautiful, more better than I ever thought I could see him photograph. And I show up to his kitchen and I realize that he actually photographed him in his kitchen, exactly where we're photographing him. So I have these images of mood in, ingrained in my head of Austin of photos that have been taken already. And I was like, well, how do I not recreate that? Cause it's a tiny space. So I brought in the canvas backdrop. I brought in a white backdrop. I have this black, um, um, flag. It's like a, 
it's not like a floppy, but it's like 40 by 40 um, that I have my assistants like hand hold behind people's heads um, for another look. And, and then this beautiful blue textured wall. So we, he walks in as cool as David Lynch ever is. You know, he's just so cool. Wearing the same thing he always wears, black work shirt. He's got some, oh, I don't know exactly his brand, but I feel like they were American Spirits, which I thought was so cool. Just cigarettes in his pocket, like just such a classic dude with his white hair, just frilled up and um, the nicest guy ever. Shakes everybody's hand, introduces himself to everybody, really casual. What are we going to do? So, okay, we're going to go from this blue wall. So cool. Thank you for providing us your kitchen with this amazing textured wall um, that looks like a movie set. Um, and then we're going to literally just have you take a step over here, turn this way, turn this way. It's going to be five minutes. We're going to be done. So we do all the, do it in five about five minutes. Um, get tons of content. Um, and that's, that's how I met him. And about, I don't know, I found out that his assistant lived right around the corner from me. Um, and I'd only run into him once since, but they, uh, he sends me this personal email and said, Hey, David would like me to let you know that he had a great time with the, with, with the photos. He loves the photos, which is something interesting because he usually hates photos. So just, he goes, take it for what, it, for what that's worth. And then I got an email maybe a couple of weeks later from the assistant again that said, hey, like, we want to let you know that, like, you're David's guy. If, if we need to have photos done, we're going to use yours. If we can, we're going to have you on. Um, and I just, like, stopped in my tracks. I, I think I was maybe driving off, of course, because I live in L.A. and we're always driving. Um, and I read that email and I just kind of, like, got this, like, giddy, weird excitement, like, of, like, you know, validation or something i don't know but from david lynch and having such a phenomenal experience with him during the shoot and then having the chance to like hear that from a piece of work that you created that was really like simple i don't know special um so about maybe like six seven months later um david is doing a master class for the company master class yeah and i was i shoot for them a lot um, and I was on bill to do a different project for them in Austin, Texas. I was already like, they had everything booked and everything. And, and sure enough, I knew that they were doing this class with David and, um, but I was already on booked and they're like, well, we'd rather have you do it cause it's food. Anyway, we don't have a food photographer. So I said, okay. And I've worked with David before. So, you know, I have it in my portfolio. I'm okay with that. And he gets, they get an email from his team that said, Hey, like, we have a couple cute, we like, we have a couple things we need to check off. Like we want this photographer and he didn't even know that I worked with masterclass. And so like also made me feel kind of cool because it was like <laughs> the client that I've already been working with, like had this like personal request for me to be doing the stills, um, if possible. And so they ended up having to rebook and I got to work with him again since. So, and it was the same thing. He, he just told me, he goes, I, I really appreciate how quick we were last time. Um, I'm like, I don't like having my photo taken. Um, and he just walks in with his little strut. And it was cool to like be able to witness him during that master class as well, especially like all the in-between moments. And he said like the artist's creative process is due to coffee and cigarettes and like all these things. It's like little moments like that that they may not air, but like it makes him him. I'm a huge David Lynch fan. Um, yeah, he also made a shoot recently that I did with Bill Hader, just incredible. Stay tuned for part two, where Josh finishes his David Lynch story and how it connects to a recent shoot with Bill Hader. He also gives some advice to beginners, as well as gives some advice on how to stand out in the industry. We'll see you next time. Oh boy. <laughs>